What's up YouTube, Maven here. Welcome back to another modern gameplay video. Today we're playing some black, white aristocrats. Yo, what's up chat? What's up lag? What's up Drew? Today we're playing some black, white aristocrats and um, like there's no specific like reason. There's no, not specifically anything new. It's just a deck that I felt like playing for a while now. I've been hungering to play it. And so I decided to brew up a version with relatively new cards just to see how it does in today's sandbox and today's meta. It's probably not going to be good. Yo, what's up, Robbie? Yo, Robbie, I've been thinking of messaging you for a long time just to say hi, but I procrastinate too much. So, hey, how's it going? <laughs> Thank you for checking in. Um, all right. So um, this deck is dedicated to just getting abiding grace value. And we have a bunch of sackable one drops that make a token when they die. Nested Shambler, Hunted Witness, Garrison Cat, Doom Traveler, Crawling Chorus, which has a really cool art. That shouldn't have been used on a common card. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, we're trying to sack them and reanimate them with the uh, Abiding Grace. We have uh, Village Rights and Bankrupt and Blood as like card advantage engines. I know it's a lot, but with the 17 sackables we got, it actually, like in testing, it actually felt really, really good. It lets us just dig through the deck and like start stacking Abiding Graces and Bastion of Remembrances. Uh, so whenever a creature dies, each opponent loses one and you gain one. So it's kind of like a Zulaport Cutthroat, except it doesn't die to a like a bolt or a push, you know? So it's like, it's a more expensive card, but um, it it's less uh, killable. So yeah, we're just gonna start stacking Abiding Graces and Bastion Remembrances while churning through the deck with these cards. And then we also get Death Value off of Vran whenever a creature dies. Each opponent loses two and you gain two. And then we have Hidden Stockpile as another way to generate tokens whenever a creature dies. If you triggered Revolt, um, at the end step you make a 1-1 token and you can pay one and sack a creature to scry one. The only thing is that we don't have um, a sack outlet that costs zero to sack something like Viserys here, for example. Um, so if we have like a bunch of these on the table and we're ready to just sack everything and win, we won't be able to really do that because we have to pay mana into our hidden stockpile. But yeah, very, very value heavy, just digging type of aristocrats deck. So it's a cool concept, but it wins very slowly, which is the problem. So if we run into something, because we're dirtling, we're dirtling a lot with this deck. So if we go up against anything mildly combo oriented, they're going to walk all over us. So that's one thing about this that's that's not going to be very good. Um, so that's why we have to rely on our sideboard against uh, some things. I actually meant to replace Burnt and Force Tender before starting, but I didn't. So I guess we're stuck with that. Uh, you can sack it to prevent uh, damage a red source would deal. So it's good against like red base sweepers like uh, Brotherhood Zed and Anger of the Gods or just any just red base removals trying to kill Vran. And then we can reanimate this every single turn with Abiding Grace to just make sure that red sources never damage us. So there's that. And then we got um, Deafening Silence for like stormy type of decks. Kami of False Hope is like, believe it or not, some of you modern sweats out there are gonna find this hard to believe, but every once in a while, oh my goodness, Drew. Hold on, hold on. We'll have to wait on that for a second. I'm doing Make the YouTube intro. Amazing. Hold on. But thank you so much. <laughs> YouTube sees what that is. <laughs> Call me of the false hope. Believe it or not, every once in a while in modern, you run into things that win by attacking you. I know. Crazy, right? Nowadays, modern has is just flooded with decks that can win by not even having to swing. It's just everything's like combo-y. Um, but when you do run into a deck that, that wins by attacking, Kami of the False Hope just locks them out of the game because you sack it to Fog and then you can reanimate it every turn with the Biting Grace and just like keep on sacking it to Fog and you just get that Kami lock. So uh, we'll see how that goes against certain things like fish would be good. Right of Oblivion, uh, you can sack a creature or sack a, a non-land permanent, which is easy for us, and you can exile target non-land permanent and it has flashback. Seriously, a main deck worthy card, but we have it in the board in case we need to kill some creatures. And then we got some Haywire Mites, which is the reason why we have one copy of Endotha Triome. Uh, and that we can also reanimate every turn with the Abiding Grace and just kill a bunch of artifacts and enchantments. So yeah. That is basically it, and it, we're ready to get onto the gameplay. But first, before we do, as always, a quick word for our sponsors. 
This video is sponsored by TCGplayer.com, the go-to marketplace for anything magic related from deck boxes, card sleeves, play mats, and more to any MTG singles in any version, language, or condition with a massive variety of sellers from all across the nation so you can make sure you always get the best prices to fit your needs. You can find them in the decklist link down below. Just click Shop TCG Player at the top to be redirected to the main site and anything you purchase through that decklist link will help support the channel. And this video is also sponsored by Mana Traders. Do you often wonder how us content creators are able to stream hundreds of decks on Magic Online over the years? Wouldn't it cost a fortune to buy all those cards? Well, the reason it's possible is because we use Mana Traders. This way, you're able to rent all the cards you want on MTGO so you don't have to go broke buying them all. So if you're planning on playing Magic Online, it's definitely in your best interest to check out Mana Traders. There's a link in the description with the code for 10% off. And now let's resume the video. All right, game number one here against Katabami 2 and we're going to be on the draw. Being on the draw with this deck is fine, honestly, because we can sustain ourselves with our life gain. But yeah, so I'm not somebody who, who like splurges. I'd never really buy anything because I, I live just like paycheck to paycheck and I, you know, barely make it by, you know, so I don't really buy anything. Um, but this time, uh, like a week ago, I decided to finally splurge uh, and I bought a, a bed frame. It's not a necessity. I only really buy necessities and a bed frame is not a necessity for years for like half my life. Really? I've been sleeping just with a mattress on the floor because a bed frame is a luxury. Um, but I decided to go on Amazon and spend 80 bucks on a, on a bed frame because I was tired of sleeping on a mattress on the floor. So, um, yeah, uh, that your donation basically helped me pay for that. So thank you. Oh uh, no, dude, historically, Tron is the worst matchup for aristocrats because we just dirtle and they're just gonna get up to Ugin. So that sucks that this is our first round. So whoever's watching on YouTube, I urge you to skip ahead to game two. Don't watch this, please don't. Like this is the worst matchup right here, like right off the bat. Like I would rather fight Amulet Titan than this. Like we, we are not winning this match. I'm telling you that right now. Because when, when we're a deck that, that sits here and just builds up like this, we really want to fight against something fair that's going to win by attacking, because that we can walk all over. All right, so next turn we can bankrupt in blood and draw a couple cards. And we have four village rights, but there and there's another card that is an exact copy of Village Rights. I think it's called like Corrupted Conviction or something like that. I forget exactly what it's called. But um, yeah, you should be running a two and two split of this and that just in case you get like meddling maged or like surgically extracted. There's Karn, the great creator. And there's O-Stone. So that's just gonna clean us up right there. I'm gonna animate O-Stone. All right, let's uh, go to combat and swing at Karn. So we already lost because once we start committing like abiding graces and like hidden stockpile, they're just going to get destroyed. Honestly, this is already a scoop. Not even lying. This is already a scoop. All right, let's uh, bankrupt and blood here, sacking these two. And draw some cards. Uh, courtyard. Play another Nested Shambler. I mean, I'll play it out just so I can, like, show what this deck really does. Because, like, imagine us going against anything fair. We'd be in such a good spot. Like, our deck is so value, value, value. Thinking of playing Paper Modern tonight, it would be my first time with the Merfolk deck. Merfolk is like very, very under underplayed right now. Merfolk is really good. Just between the Vodalian Hex Catcher and like Force of Negation, it's just it's hard to like interact with it if you're anything controlly. I feel like Rakdos still beats it every time, but like other stuff is gonna have a hard time against it. All right, so let's go with, uh, let's 
Attack Karn. I'm going to swing three things at Karn and one at them because they could have like Warping Whale. Are they going to blow him up with O Stone? So I, I'll just, uh, Village Rice is an instant, by the way. So, um, oh, they just let Karn go. All right. Um, it sucks, like, committing an Abiding Grace to the table since, you know, they can have, they, they have Sundering Titan too. You know, I'm just going to skip, like, we're not, we are not going to do anything to this Tron deck. They, they're going to walk all over us. Like, let's be real. All right, so we don't even have sideboard for Tron. I think we're just going to bring in Haywire Might. And maybe a couple Rite of Oblivions, because let's let's actually just bring in four Rite of Oblivions, because we can like kill Karns, we can kill O-Stones. All right, so let's bring in those and we're going to cut. Um, the Crawling Chorus. And cut a village rights. Cut another village rights. Cut another village rights. I think I feel like I'd rather have bankrupt in blood. Alrighty. Yeah, and villain is such a very very strong uh, card in fish. Such a strong card. Very very good. All right. Mulligan, the one lander. Keep this one. We'll ditch the um, garrison cat. Hidden stockpile, by the way, also triggers off fetches. So it's good to have like at least eight fetches whenever you're running this card. Which I think we do. Exclamation point deck is working now. Our unhunted witness, go. So you're probably not going to be able to see this on the camera because it's too bright. But on my cheek, I have like a like a like a slash, a slash mark. And the the sleep paralysis demons been getting to me. More often than ever before. Like, I, I wake up sometimes just with, like, a slash mark on me. Currently, there's, there's a four on my body right now. There's, um, there's two here, there's one on my chest, and then there's one on my cheek. And I just wake up with them. They, like, they're not there when I go to bed, and I just wake up with them. And no, I don't sleep with sharp objects or anything remotely hard. It's just all, like, blankets and stuff and pillow. There's nothing hard and my nails are, are short, so I'm not doing it to myself. They're short and even I try to replicate it myself and go really hard. But it, no matter like how hard is, it doesn't leave a mark like like the marks I got. There's no way I could be doing it to myself. It's a sleep paralysis demon. I'm telling you, I, I've suffered from sleep paralysis my whole life, ever since I was like nine years old or something. And um. Yeah, this this one's going to be on me for the rest of my life, probably. It was a very uh, bloody uh, slash mark. And the one on my chest should go away. I had another one a month ago that was like over here on my chest as well. Um, all right, so we're going to go with uh, hidden stockpile plus just attack and then we'll sack a haunted witness. Sack Hunted Witness, uh, Scry. Um, I'll take a land drop. Because that'll allow me to do both of my plays next turn. Trigger Double Revolt, get two servos. I love Hidden Stockpile. So good when you start stacking them. But yeah, the, the one that's on my cheek right now, it's like an inch long. Um, the one on my arm is like three inches long. The one on my chest right now is like four inches long. Like these slash marks. Um, and uh, I think the one on my arm was going to be there. For, I'll be able to see that for the rest of my life. It's pretty, it was pretty, uh, pretty red slash mark. 
Uh, the one on my cheek, I feel like should should go away and, and like because I've never had one on my face before. I always wake up with these these uh, slashes elsewhere. But yeah, yeah, I always wake up with them elsewhere. This is the first time I had one on my face. Yo, 12, you're in Amsterdam. What, what, what do you do in Amsterdam? So we uh, reanimate our hunted witness from the graveyard with the abiding grace. Oh, has got a one ring. I thought that was an O stone. Dude, look at this value. Aristocrats goes crazy. Like imagine if we had a, a bastion of remembrance plus like a sack, like a, a zero sack outlet. See, uh, with this, I have to pay a mana to sack things. That's why it kind of hurts a bit. Because, like, imagine I just drop Bastion of Remembrance, sack my whole board, and just, just dome them for, like, a million damage. Okay, the opponent is, like, having a hard time assembling Tron. That's good for us. Never mind, they have an O-Stone, so we're going to lose everything next turn. But remember, Servos don't die to O-Stone. It only kills colorless permanents. Wait, never mind. Each non-land permanent. All right, um, sack doomed traveler. Cause we're gonna reanimate it at the end step. Wins my piece to the bottom. Go to combat, attack for a bunch. Go to the end step and we're going to reanimate doomed traveler. Get some servos. And when they go to crack the O stone, I'll um I'll just scry a couple times. Oh, they're gonna die to their own one ring. Isn't it indestructible? Okay, the Kraken map, they're getting close to assembling Tron. They just need one more. Doing a hockey tournament, just finished day two of four. Nice. Dude, you're you're getting big in the hockey scene. They have another one ring. In um in Lord of the Rings. In in Lord of the Rings, do they um does the ring have anything to do with Sauron? Why is the Iris Sauron on that? Bankrupt in blood. I will absolutely take that. Put that on top. All right, let's uh, let's bankrupt in blood because we can't attack here anyways because they just played the one ring. Sack a couple servos. Play concealed courtyard. And just go to the end step and uh, reanimate. Reanimate the hunted witness. Sauron made the ring. If he ever gets it back, he takes over the world. But Sauron is like some sorcerer, dude. What is the eye of Sauron? Is that like his creation as well? They don't make stuff like Lord of the Rings anymore. That was like revolutionary, you know? It's his disembodied form. Oh, I see. Like his malignant spirit. Okay, so they're going to O Stone. Let's crack a couple things here. Doom Traveler, do I want that? Uh, I mean, I do need creatures. I could dig for um, I could dig for Vran. Do I want that Doom Traveler? I mean, it's not bad. I'll top it. Okay, everything dies. I get three tokens.
Wow, we this is the, I think this sets a new record of the longest I've ever seen. <sighs> does Rite of Oblivion exile an online permanent or does it destroy? A exclamation point card, Rite of Oblivion. Exile target no limit. Okay, so we can find a, a Rite of Oblivion. We still have a chance. Um, but yeah, this sets a record as the longest I've ever seen a Tron deck go without assembling Tron, like, undisrupted. All right, end step, let's reanimate um, Doom Traveler. Probably chump with Doom Traveler, get another flyer. Ulamog. Walking, oh, okay, yeah. Um, Walking Ballista does it. GG. Yeah, Tron, that, that was just going to be a losing game right there. There's no way. Yeah, Shroom, isn't that what sleep paralysis demons do? All right, Cirque game number two. And, oh, wait, we got to update the record here. We're going to be on the play here. And we're going to keep this. All right. Don't make me go up against a combo deck. I know I said I'd rather go up against Amulet Titan rather than Tron with this deck. But still, don't make me go up against Amulet Titan. <laughs> Maybe this deck should have Rite of Oblivion main deck and just cut one of the card draw effects, like cut village rights and just run four main deck Rite of Oblivion. So I could see that because Rite of Oblivion is so good in here. It's so easy to just exile non online permanence for free. All right, we're going to go with Garrison Cat. The next turn. I think I'll just drop out a hidden stockpile, get that going. Ooh, change of plans. I think we might go Vran. So now my goal is draw a couple cards, hopefully find a land, and then drop out Hidden Stockpile with Revolt triggered. That's going to be the play. We're Owen Wilson. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunate. Right of Oblivion, yeah, it, this is absolutely the perfect deck for Right of Oblivion. It, like, literally nothing else could be better than this for Right of Oblivion. Ugh, Urza Saga, they're going to have a giant life linker. Dude, uh, really, I should cut Village Rights and just run Right of Oblivion in the main deck. But hey, I can't complain. Village Rights is going to help us actually do our stuff here. Because, like, the, the reason I'm able to run 20 lands in here is because of these card draw effects. Like, if I didn't run Village Rights, I'd have to run a 21st land for sure. So it is uh, Affinity. Perennial Plating. All right, um, let's attack first. And then we will village rights, hopefully find our land. Great and gain with Vran. Didn't just found two more Vrans. Are you kidding me? All right, crawling chorus, our singleton. I can't believe they utilized this art on a common that nobody's ever going to play. I mean, I'm playing it, but you know. It, this could have this art could have easily been on like a rare. People do play it in standard.
in toxic tribal decks? <laughs> is that even a thing in standard? I doubt it. I don't follow standard though, so I don't know. There's a good toxic deck in standard. Ah. Uh, Okay, they are not committing to the saga here. Brainstone. Sacrifice it to draw three cards and put two. Okay. That's fine. Ornithopter getting in for six. Give me a land. Dang it, man. All right, hidden stockpile. Okay, so I'm probably going to stop on my upkeep. And yeah, let's set a stop on my upkeep. And we'll scry on our upkeep, sacking crawling chorus, trigger revolts. And then I'll just like find my land, play Hunted Witness, and then sack it on their turn to get another Vran trigger. Because right now I really need to gain life. And they're making their 7-7 um, seven, seven construct fair and balanced. Still can't believe Urza Saga is legal. And here comes the Shadow Spear. Oh wait, Haywire Mites. That actually sucks because that was my play. I was going to use it on my upkeep here. Another Spring Leaf Drum. Blows up hidden stockpile. All right, well, let's take the stop off my upkeep. Soon to be trampling lifelink, yep. Bankrupt in blood. Uh, there's no way we can survive here. Yeah, I just got mana screwed. Okay, definitely slamming in all of these. Um, we'll cut the village rights, the crawling chorus, and a bankrupt in blood. All right. So gotta remember to fetch our Indotha Triome here for the Haywire Might. If I can get to the point where I'm reanimating Haywire Might every turn with um, Abiding Grace, then we should just win. We can just destroy their artifact and enchantment count. Alrighty, um... I'll keep it, but I don't have a second sackable for Bankrupt in Blood. Honestly, I'm just going to I'm just going to get the Andatha here. I don't think um, I, I'm in a rush right now to play Doom Traveler. No main board interaction though. Yeah, I was just like banking off of the fact that our deck is so like, like, ha like has chump blockers forever and just like can gain a bunch of life off of the draining gains. And that we'll just sustain ourselves and not even care what they're doing. But that that's only against decks that win fairly by attacking. Technically, they did do that, but they're also I got mana screwed. I definitely could have had a good chance if I if I drew my lands. All right. 
Nested Shambler. Um, Shocking here feels wrong, but I do, I do feel like I need another black. All right, we'll go Doom Traveler. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to go Doom Traveler, Nested Shambler. Because next turn I want to sack him to Bankrupt in Blood to find my land drops. It's not often in modern where both decks on the table go tap land go, tap land go. It's a lot of blockers. Frog might. And the okay, the Salamander, they didn't have a spire, thank goodness. Okay. I got a windswept heath. Um Um, I think I just write of oblivion killing the salamander or do I just save it? You know what? I'm just going to go ran and go and just chump block and just drain and gain. I want to save right of oblivion for like cranial plating and Urza saga. I mean, wait, I can't hit Urza saga, but you know, cranial plating and like scarier stuff. Nettle cyst, perhaps. Oh, no, they have Neoform. No! Oh, I should have killed the Salamander. Dang it. Now I'm going to get Gristle or Crater Hoof. Okay, well, I'm dead. All right. We are now 0-2. Uh, okay, I think a lot of our, our games today are going to be lost just by not main decking Rite of Oblivion. So I feel like in, in a lot of these situations, if I had that over over uh, village rights, it would be better. But OK, so I would cut crawling chorus and the four village rights and put in one more land and four rights of oblivion. But then if we cut another sackable, we may be low on unsackable one drops to like fuel the deck because these these one drops are what make the deck go round, you know? Because, like, if I get a star with only one one-drop sackable, then it's a problem. Like, I need to have, like, at least two, like, at the minimum, to function. Because I got to have things to sack to bankrupt in blood. Yo, I just discovered... I just discovered that Dune is a movie. I seriously thought for years that Dune was a video game. But I realized I had it confused with um, Journey. You know that, that game called Journey where you're like a little mystical being floating through the desert? Um, that's what I thought Dune was for years. But apparently Dune's an entirely different thing. I still don't know what it's about. I, I've never seen like footage of it. Um, but yeah, I found some movie and not a game. And apparently Dune 2 is like popular, a popular movie right now. I checked on IMDb and it's like one of the highest rated movies of all time. But from reviews, I've heard of it. Um, I heard it's like confusing and it's like questionable. That's all I heard. It is a complicated movie. And the only people I've heard review it are Kara and Nate and Cecilia Blomdahl. Those are the only three people. So maybe I shouldn't take their word from it. It's great if you like the book. Dune is three movies now and two TV shows. Ah. I haven't seen any footage of it, but all, I, all I've seen was a screenshot of some, like, dude that looks like a main character, but then, like, just by judging by his face, judging a book by its cover, he looks like he has, like, a really annoying character. Just some dude with, like, curly hair. Ethereum Sculptor, are we going to fight Blue Steel?
All right, let's get our swamp here. Nessa Chambler, his character is great. Uh, yeah, like he, because he looks like a zoomer, and it's just that he has the broccoli zoomer haircut, and it just makes him seem like a really annoying snobby kid, you know? That's the thing about it. Mox Tantalite, oh, they're comboing. They're definitely comboing. Are they on like mirror combo? Cavern of Solace. Village rights. Um. Okay, let's go to combat, and I will attack with the uh, hunted witness. They're taking it. Okay, then I guess I'll just go bastion of remembrance. Next turn, I can sack something to village rights and then reanimate it with ab Abiding Grace. Okay, next turn, the Tantalite's coming out. Artificer is what they name with cavern, so they they need they desperately need these Ethereum sculptors for their combo. Probably also have Chief Engineer, Urza. I think I'm still gonna attack with both my guys here. Or let's just attack with one, just the Hunted Witness. Are they going to take it again? Okay, no, they're blocking with the construct token. All right, I'll village rights. All right, I'll just follow up here with the abiding grace and reanimate our hunted witness. Get another basic planes here. Get back our dude and pass. Okay, now I would like to draw a chain of just like village rights and bankrupt and bloods and just find our Vran, start going off. They got the Tantalite. Okay, what scary abomination are they about to do? Build of Ruin hits nothing. They probably have some kind of way of like infinite, like reanimating that thing. Get infinite mana. Another Urza just to get another construct token. Interesting. That's the best they got. I'm fine. They can start tapping into Urza's ability and getting free cards. They get a free watery grave. And they're not attacking because they know I have the freest chump blocks in the world. All right, Doom Traveler. I wish I had a, a hidden stockpile right now. That'd be great.
Okay, we'll get in with Hunted Witness, and that's it. They take it. All right, let's gain a life. They're eventually going to find an Urza Saga, though, and just get a Shadow Spear. And then at that point, I'll be pretty screwed. Sword of the Meek, I knew it. Boundary Inspector. Remember the good old days when you could play Urza, Astrolabe, Oko, and Uro together in a deck? Oh yeah, them good old days. Honestly, not too far off with Saga alone. Again with the constructs, we will chump and chump. Get some tokens, get some drains. And uh, a lot of people who are probably newer to magic might leave in the comments like, why is Blood Artist not in here? Well, it's because this is modern and Blood Artist will die on the spot to literally anything. This won't. So that, that's why. But then, then a sweaty player may come in and counter that and be like, well, Maven, the literal top deck in modern, the Yawgmoth combo plays Blood Artist. Yeah, but they, they have, like, so many ways to fetch them and get more. They have, like, Eldritch Evolution, Court of Calling. Like, they can get another one in a, in a heartbeat if they wanted to. That's a good draw. Okay, I feel like they'll actually block this time since I have only one Abiding Grace. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just sack now. Let's sack a uh, squirrel and a and, uh, hunted witness. Draw three cards. Now, please let me start chaining these card draw effects. Okay, there's another one. Without sackables, though. Garrison cat. Okay, well, I got some pretty good cards for next turn. I just got to live and hope they don't find their, their thing, you know? Another Abiding Grace and Bastion is going to be very, very good. All right, let's get back. Hunted Witness because it makes a life linker. I'm 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 living life on on the edge right now. Just like literally any turn, they can find the 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 Thopter Foundry. I'm just dodging bullets right now, like like the Matrix. I think I did mention this in the last stream, but I did actually finally get an LED strip to put in my background. It's like along the edge of the the floor. Like that wooden brown thing, like, and I put it along the bottom of that. Um, but I tested it out the other day and it didn't look very good, but maybe it's because there was still some light. I think it literally needs to be like pitch black back there, like dark. But I feel like if I turn on my ring light, it'll illuminate it and make it look bad. But also it's kind of just loosely laying there. I don't know if there's like an adhesive strip I'm supposed to like put against the wall to make it actually face towards me because currently it's just all coiled up some parts are like probably facing away i don't know if it's two-sided though animation module you're like aerosmith how so 
I don't get the reference. Living on the Edge. I mean, there's probably a lot of songs and movies and poems and books called Living on the Edge, really. All right, let's chump chump. Drain, drain. And they're going to be very upset once I play these cards next turn. Also, it's just a matter of time before they find um, Shadow Spear. Like, they got to have Saga and Shadow Spear in there, right? No way they don't. But we've been getting real lucky. They're 70 cards, 17 cards deep and didn't find either of those eight cards they're looking for. Nine cards. Maybe four Sagas, four Thopter Foundries, and the one Shadow Spear. Looks like they're going to activate Urza, get another free spin of the wheel. I'm literally about to win. Don't you dare find it right when I'm about to win. Oh, no, they just got another Urza. Didn't get another Construct token. Another Hunted Witness. All right, let's go with Bastion of Remembrance. I think we just win by attacking here because they literally can't block. Or they'll they'll get drained. Yeah, I think I just go to combat and swing everything right now. If they block, that's fine. They would go to one if they if they block three things. All right, get a million triggers. Trade them for six, put them to one. Play another Abiding Grace. Play Hunted Witness and pass. And we reanimate Hunted Witness and reanimate Doomed Traveler. All right, we kind of got them by the balls right now, so they really have to pull something out of there, you know what, to be able to have a chance. They need Shadow Spear. Like, that's the only, or they need the Thopter Foundry. One of the two. All right, now's the time, opponent. You gotta find it right now. But if I find Hidden Stockpile, I could potentially still win through it. Actually, no, no, because they'll have infinite because of Urza being able to tap. You know, so they'll have infinite life. Knowing my luck, they'll get it here. <laughs> okay, they found another sword. Not quite what they're looking for. They gotta activate Saga's spin the wheel. Like it's their last ditch, their last ditch attempt right here. And yeah, like I said, knowing my luck, they're gonna find it. They're gonna spin the wheel and they're gonna hit the, the sword or the foundry. So when I edit my videos, like, okay, they didn't find it. They have one more one or two more spins here when i edit my mtg videos i basically you can see the sound waves like throughout the whole video when you're editing and so i just try to find sections where there's like a long moment of silence because these these streams are so long that i just like zone out at times and don't say anything so i try i try to find those long moments of silence and just cut them out um but I, for many years, I've always wanted like to have an editing tool of like a system that can like find the silence for you and cut it out for you. 
I think that would be incredible. And it does exist and people do use that kind of thing, but I don't, it's like so fringe. Like, I don't know where to find it. <laughs> it's like a very fringe tool that I don't think just anyone can have access to it. I think you can do it with audacity, but it's like complicated or something. I don't remember. But that would be nice if you if if I could figure that out, because that's something I've wanted for like eight years now. What's up, Kyoji? Good to see you again. How you doing? Oh, they got time sieve. No. No. They hit Tezra into time sieve. Oh no! No! They they minus Tezra and they go and search out the Thopter Foundry. They found it right in the nick of time, dude. That's so stupid. No. Lame. I was right there. They were at one. If only if I remember the turn where I bankrupt and blooded and I decided to keep the hunted witness back. If I had attacked with it and they took it, then I would have won. <laughs> I literally would have won. Okay, bring it right of oblivion and haywire might again. Devin's silence is not the worst, but I'm not gonna bring it in here. All right, we always cut the village rights and the crawling chorus. And I, I really don't want to cut bankrupt and blood because it like actually helps a lot. But since I'm sacking stuff to right of oblivion, I guess I'll cut one. Going so down on the card advantage just makes the deck feel like it runs a little bit worse. But there's really nothing else to cut. Because everything else is like needed. Like I don't want to lose hidden stockpile. It's like pretty big. All right, that looks good. As long as we get a, a, a hand with like two lands in it, basically every opener is going to be good, good enough to keep because of all the one drop plays we got. Leyline of the Void. Looks like I'm going to have to write of oblivion that. Temple of Receipts. Nested Shambler. All right, let's get a Plains. I gotta save this windswept teeth to get a green source for the haywire mite. All right, right of oblivion, kill off the ley line. And I get to keep my right of oblivion, it doesn't get exiled, that's awesome. The fact that this can flash back too is just ridiculous. This seriously should have been main deck, I don't know what I was thinking. All right, let's get out Bastion of Remembrance. Don't spell Pierce. Thank you. Yeah, two removal spells in one. It's so good. Like, I don't know what went through my head where I didn't main deck that. It's just like, I really liked having the four and four of Bankrupt and Blood and the Village Rights because it really helped you it really helped the deck just keep on fueling itself. It, it, it just helped the consistency of the deck. Arcbound Ravager, that's kind of scary. Abiding Grace. Attack for one. They'll most likely take it. Um, all right, I'm gonna, I want to get the tap land, so I'm just gonna nest the Shambler and then just bankrupt in blood here. And then I'll just uh, follow up with the Indotha trial. Draw some cards. Ooh, Haywire Might. 
All right, I got to get the green source. I'm going to wait on it, though, because there's a chance they could, like, see the Andatha and, like, feel to ruin it. So I'm going to wait and do it on the end step. There's a version that, yeah, like I said, um, I, I mentioned that earlier, Kyoji. Like, you should be running a two and two split of the, the copy of Village Ride so that, like, just in case you get meddling maged or surgically extracted, you'll have the other copy of it, you know. But I didn't do that because I was feeling lazy. Arcbound Crusher. Okay. They attacked not knowing if I could have a Dryad Arbor. Come on. All right, let's get our Indatha. Um... All right, I think let's just attack. I could write of oblivion on something. Like this, this arcbound ravager could become an issue. Eh. Let's just abide in grace. Haywire might. Oh, whenever an artifact enters anywhere. Okay. Probably going to want to kill that. And reanimate the nested shambler. They even have Lotus Bloom. Jeez, they're going all in. Like, do they have Reshape in there? They gotta have Reshape. If they're running Mox, Tantal Mox Tantalite and Lotus Bloom, they gotta have Reshape. Yeah, I know my, uh, my Might cannot target creatures. I meant, like, to deal with, like, um, swords and stuff. Urza. Okay, what do I want to write of Oblivion on? Because if I do it on the Arcbound Crusher, they're just going to sack it to Arcbound Ravager. So maybe I should do it on Arcbound Ravager. But this guy tramples, and that could be a huge issue later on. It already is a huge issue. They get a free island. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to take this so I can save my, my nested shamblers like sack fodder for my Red of Oblivion. Okay, well, there's another nested Trampler. All right, well, let's um, kill the Trampler. Sacking nested Trampler. They're going to sack it to Ravager, get a bunch of counters. Yep. Oh, they don't move all its counters, they just modular. Okay, I see. It's been a while since I fought like modular strategies. Oh no, wait, it did get all its counters. Still had to force it. Um, I'm gonna fetch a swamp here and play Nessa Chambler, and I wanna save up the green so like if they play anything I can hit with. With Haywire Might, I'll do it. Okay, well, at least we know that we're not going to get comboed on anymore, but it's just a matter of, like... If they can beat us down, which I, I think we're good at this point now that we have the Abiding Grace 
Bastion go in. I think we're good. We can just jump forever. Because, like, Shadow Spear will get instantly sniped by this. So I, I don't think we really have much to fear unless they can deal with this guy. Like, if they can slam another Ley Line, uh, I mean, I'll just be able to exile it, right? But then I'll lose this guy and I'll have to find my second one. But if I can find a second Red of Oblivion, I'm feeling pretty good. Foundry Inspector. These guys don't actually seem too helpful to their deck. I don't know exactly what they're for, but there could be a combo that uses them. Okay, um, let's go to combat and um, let's swing with one nested shambler. They block it even though it's actually going to gain me a life. That actually helps that they blocked it, you know? So I drain and gain and get an extra token, so it actually hurts them to block it. Don't know why they would do that. All right, play another Abiding Grace. Play a Hunted Witness. And then we will gain a life and reanimate our Nested Chambler. There was somebody who wanted me to win with, with like, blocking an Emrakul of 15 squirrels, but, I mean, at least we got some squirrels. I think it was actually Drew. Drew, you still around? Were you the one who wanted me to win with squirrels? I actually, when we actually played Mono Green Squirrel Tribal, um, like a, a year ago at this point, I actually really enjoyed that deck. I thought it was like really underrated. It felt pretty good. I mean, technically Mono Green, you gotta have a black splash for the ravenous squirrel, but yeah. I, I was really a big fan of that Verdant Command card. I felt like it was just a good card on its own, like without even like being a squirrel, like squirrel travel card. I felt like it was a very just solid card. Tezzeret, here we go. Well, whatever they get, I'll be able to kill it. All right, they search a thing. Animation module. They might be able to get one trigger on that before I kill it. Arcbound Crusher. All right, exile the animation module. Because when that guy comes back to play with the counter, they'll be able to, like, get a servo. See if they want to respond by sacking something to Ravager. I doubt they will. They're just going to flow to mana. And they sack it to get a counter. Yeah, Abiding Grace is such a fun card. I love this card. There's so much it can do. Like, there's so much options for it in Modern. Maybe we should be running Foot Life Fiend in here. I could see it being pretty good with Foot Life Fiend. Um, that could be like a sideboard, though. Um, what if you did like a Death Shadow deck and you splash white and you just always reanimate your shadows? All right, let's go to combat. Let's swing Hunted Witness at Tezzeret. If I swing all at Tezzeret, we could kill it unless they block with this. They'd have to sack this to get a counter on Arcbound Ravager. You know, if I do that, that would make sure the Arcbound Crusher is gone. That would make sure the Crusher is gone. 
Is that thing's going to be an issue? I would lose... Not much really. I mean, I gained a bunch of life and a bunch of my stuff died. I don't think I'm dying on the backswing. I think I do it. Swing all at Tezzeret. I am going to reanimate a bunch of stuff with Abiding Grace if they block like these guys. But I think these are the ones they'll let through. One of these will be blocked on the Crusher and they'll sack the Crusher and then these two will get through. They're not going to let these die. They'll, they'll kill my squirrels. Heap Doll. Isn't Heap Doll the thing that you can sack to exile a card from a graveyard? They're just letting it through. Tezzeret dies. All right. Hunted Witness. Reanimate this and... Do I have another thing to reanimate? I don't. All right, gain a life. Oh, I, f I forget. It puts a counter on that guy. <laughs> Every time I do it. Yeah, I was right. That is the one that I was thinking. The exile card from a graveyard. That doesn't seem like the sweetest thing to pair with it. Animation module with Arcbound Crusher is kind of crazy. That's pretty cool. I might want to mess around with that in a deck someday. Could use another Rite of Oblivion, please, or a Bankrupt in Blood, one of the two. Opponents already down to the red on their timer, under five minutes. I didn't realize they were taking that long. Why you call for? Why you have a foil Russian heap doll? Uh, yeah, I I typically in paper I've played a lot of cards where people have to like take them and read them because they don't know what they do. Because I'm a brewer, I like to play wacky stuff. Mainly Celestia. I've just played lots of modern Celestia decks in paper tournaments where I just play weird things that people have to read. Remember the good old days when uh, when uh, uh, Rock's War Monk was a good card? I mean, it still does seem like a good card. It doesn't die to bolt. I remember playing that in Coco decks. I still have my foils. All right, um, this is the biggest guy. So we'll block that, but then we're dead. All right, GG. Unfortunately, we got comboed on, so we got that first game robbed from us. Again, the whole main deck right of Oblivion issue. That's going to be my downfall of this, I know. Actually, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. I got to use the bathroom first, and then we'll resume with game number four in three, two, one, go. Game number four here against Solo Hash. We're going to be on the draw. Yeah, it's it's hot here. It's, um, it's... Every every day after a thunderstorm, it's usually really hot for some reason. I don't know why. Um, there was a huge thunderstorm here yesterday. All right. Uh, that's a lot of bastions and abiding graces. 
pretty slow. I think I'm going to mulligan. All right, I'll keep this one and ditch a marsh flats. So uh, yeah, my, my air conditioner's on now. If it ends up being like, let me know if it's loud. Like, I mean, not that if it's loud, but just if you hear it, if you hear it at all, I want to know. Because if you can hear it, then I should probably turn it off. Because like every time I try turning on my AC, uh, like f during a stream, when I go and check the footage later, it's just unbearably like noisy in the background. Like being able to hear it at all is, is a no-go. At least with my little desk fan here, you can't hear it. But when I have my desk fan on, it just annoyingly blows my hair around. And it's... I don't like that. Arn's Bastion. Is it like a, a Mystic Forge deck? Like a core tapper type strategy? Oh, it's this deck again. All right, let me tell my opponent I already fought this. Hi, I'm recording a video and unfortunately I already got the Thopter Sword matchup, so I have to go. GLHF in the next one. So uh do you do you hear does anybody in the chat hear the AC in the background? I mean if you have your own noises going on around you, you probably don't hear it. You noisy there to tell? Yeah, i I figured. But if anybody else is watching. Please let me know if you can hear it. Like you'll probably not hear it when I'm when I'm quiet, but like when I'm speaking, you may you may be able to hear it. But yeah, during this game and the next game, it should be like it should by that time it should get cool enough in here to where I can turn it off and then I'll have it off for the pioneer video. Um, but yeah, just since it's at the end of the modern video, I feel like it's OK just to try it out and, and hear later on how it sounds like when I go to edit the video. And I'll know next week if I'll be able to have my AC on or not, because I have a new mic now. I, I finally got a Shure SM7B. And uh, there's really good noise reduction. So I'm thinking that maybe there's a chance that you can't hear the AC anymore. So I'm trying it. All right. Mulligan creature of the day is our fourth round opponent. And we'll keep this one. Ditch one of our marsh fats. Mountain. Okay. Ragavan's fine. I have really good blockers for Ragavan. Really, really good blockers. So I this is a matchup I wanted to see. A matchup that wins by attacking us, you know? They're actually attacking me. Can't believe it. Converting kitty combs. Don't thought sees me. Tarmogoyf. All right. Tarmography. All right. Let's go get a swamp and play our hidden stockpile. And let's attack. And we'll get a mirror token and pass. Saga. All right, so this is a deck with Ren and Six is trying to like reanimate Saga. So Shadow Spear is going to be an issue. Too bad I don't have main deck Rite of Oblivion. Oh yeah, Ren can just ping off my guys. <laughs> Forgot about that. Hex Parasite as well. All right, let's get a godless shrine. Play a bastion of remembrance and pass. Get another servo. Another stevo.
They get back their fetch land. They cycle a Baron Moor. Yeah, I've seen this deck many times, just the Ren Value deck. Alrighty. Um, they can activate Saga and get a 2-2. Two -two. That's not really worth attacking here. So I think I'm just going to play and sack Hunted Witness. Let's get a Plains here. And sack with the Plains. Scry, looking for that Abiding Grace. Uh, Doom Traveler to the bottom. Play Double Nested Shambler. And I'll try, I'll scry on my upkeep. I'll set an upkeep stop here. All right. Um, yeah, pass. I, I can't really get in at Ren here. I can put it to two. It's not enough, though. Yeah, it's going to be tough to fight through a Shadow Spear. It's like the, the biggest issue uh, for us. And like, I think this is our third Saga deck today that we fought, right? There was that Urza deck. There, there's this deck, and then there's the Affinity deck. Yeah, like literally three Saga decks today. That and, and like Saga's like bad for us. So that's like another reason why we're getting screwed today. Actually, no, because we haven't even seen a single Shadow Spear yet today. There's a Haywire Might. Oh, and they can just reset Saga forever with the Hex Parasite and I have no removal. Oh my goodness, this is bad. This is bad. This is really bad. Yeah, I think it's scoop time. They're just... You know, maybe... Hold on, hold on. They're eating Bastion. Maybe not. Maybe I have a chance. You can chump the constructs, yeah. I think we're getting a lag spike. Yeah. Okay, upkeep. Sack and nested shambler. Scribe. Look for that abiding grace. And Dotha to the bottom. Draw. Doom Traveler. Okay, well, that gives me a flyer. Okay, so now I can throw these all at red and six. They're blocking the life linker and this human soldier. All right, so I will sack these things. Vran. Vran is pretty good. Drains and gains every turn. I'll keep Vran. Let block, let Goyf block that one. Go to the end step, make a servo. Ren is gone. That Hex Parasite is going to just keep resetting this thing. They're going to get the Shadow Spear now. Stone of a wreck. Okay, that actually really hurts. Main deck stone of a wreck, and they have five main deck copies. Yeah, and they're killing that. My sack outlet I needed for Ran. Yeah, it's gonna be a scoop. Their deck just has way too much interaction for us. Alright, uh we're going to bring in, you guessed it, Raid of Oblivion. <laughs> Um, Haywire Might can also kill Saga and whatever Saga wants to grab. Uh, Kami of the I mean, uh, Burns and Force Tender could prevent Ren from pinging things and prevent bolts, but like, I don't think I'm, I'm not going to bring it in. All right, so we'll cut Village Rights, the Crawling Chorus, and one Bankrupt in Blood, as we usually do. I 
I even thought about making this deck in mono black. It's possible. That it's possible to make this aristocrats deck in mono black. It was actually pretty fun. Maybe I'll I'll play that in a future future deck. Um I mean we got some good cards here, but it doesn't really do much together. I don't have a sack outlet. Hmm. Ran plus Bastion is a lot of drain in game. I'll keep it. I can't mulligan this. It's just like, I wish I did have some better stuff to make the hand more cohesive. But it'll have to do, and we have to just draw stuff, like hopefully a bankrupt in blood. All right, we can take the stop off of ref keep now. Stone of Iraq, they already found it. All right, we got a hidden stockpile. All right, let's get a planes and play hidden stockpile. Forgot I brought in Haywire Might. Probably should have got my Indatha. And there's the Shadow Spear. Play Vren. Do I want to sack on my upkeep? No. Stomping Grounds, Goyf. Hiving Needle on probably Hidden Stockpile. That's annoying. I gotta find my Haywire Might now. Another Bastion of Remembrance. Alright, play Nested Shambler, play Doom Traveler. Go to combat, attack with Vran. They found, like, the three cards we really didn't want to see the most, like, in their hand there. Okay, I have Rite of Oblivion now, but what do I deal with? <laughs> like, seriously, what do I deal with? Um, Shadow Spear is not too big of an issue at the moment, but it will be. Um, Stone of a Wreck is really annoying, because I can't sack anything, but Piving Needle is shutting down my hidden stockpile, my sack outlet. I think it's got to be Stone of a Wreck here. And we'll sack um, the Servo token. The Unholy Heat and Vran. Okay. Unfortunately, it does not get the death trigger. Pass. I get a servo. Their goif is now a four five. Cycles Baron Moore. I'm gonna take this because we can swing back and like kill Red and Six. Play a backup Vran. They have another Ren in six. And now their Tar Tarmogoyf is a five six. I really gotta hit my land drops. I gotta I gotta kill that Shadow Spear. That Shadow Spear is gonna be the death of us. Can I get a Bankrupt in Blood? That'd be nice. I get the pun now. Bankrupt in Blood. Because it's like, um, it's Blood Bank. 
There's a thing called a blood bank. I get it. I put two and two together. I'm smarter than a fifth grader. All right. Um. Yeah, this is not looking good. I think we just attack Ren and Six. Play another hidden stockpile. I wish that hidden stockpile said at the beginning of the end step, but unfortunately it's at the beginning of your end step. It'd be insane if it was every end step, especially in commander. Just have like a Viserys here and then just like get a free scry in everybody's turn. Potential, a lot of sack value depending on your commander. Engineer explosives on two. This has just gotten worse. Please crack it. Yes, yes. Why do they do that? Why do they do that? They just saved us. And I drew a right of oblivion. Okay, uh, let's attack, and then we'll just right of oblivion on the uh, on the shadow spear. I don't know why they did that. Okay, hey, what's up, tipping it out? Oh, there's a saga. Pakanuma's gonna get back Goif, probably. You know, it gets back Ren and Six. There's a bankrupt in blood. All right, uh, let's attack Ren. All right, bankrupts, bankrupt in blood. Sack these. Can I find my third land now? Wow, no third land? We're 19 cards deep into our deck and did not find a third land? Oh, this is Omega Mana Screw. This is Omega Mana Screw, dude. That's insane. Goyf is back. I have these flyers. I can just fly over and kill Ren. There's the land. Thank goodness. All right. Swamp. Let's play Bastion of Remembrance. Gotta get that life gain going. Go to combat, swing at Ren with the flyers. Please tell me you don't have a second copy of Shadow Spear. There's no shot, right? There's no way you got a second Shadow Spear. If they can also find a, a fifth artifact, I'd be dead. Oh no, they just get Stone of a Wreck. Okay. They have a second copy of Stone of a Wreck. That makes sense. I've seen like sideboards like currently in this this day and age in modern that have like four Stone of a Wrecks because of the Yogg Moth combo. Um, and it looks like this may be one of those. All right, well, let's chump this guy. Take the other. Drain and gain. Oh, wait, we didn't drain and gain because of stone. There's a stone, Luigi. And I don't have enough mana for Rite of Oblivion. Yeah, we, we lost. Just ultimate mana screw. That's unfortunate. It is what it is. So three games lost to not having main deck Red of Oblivion, fourth game lost to Mana Screw. Actually, no, the, the, first, the first round was lost to just being at the worst possible matchup imaginable. Then the, the next two were lost, or the next three were lost to not having main deck Red of Oblivion and partly also Mana Screw in the, in the fourth game. 
All right, fifth game here. Can we finally snag a W? Let's go with keep. All right. This is like, that is precisely why I don't like playing low land counts. I, I always go more land heavy. I like in a deck like this, I would typically play like 22 lands, but I ran 20 just because I was like, that's what a normal person would do. I mean, a normal person would probably run 18 lands in here because of bankrupt and blood and village rights and people 5-0 leagues with like low land counts. And it's like, that's crazy. It's crazy lucky. Okay, opponents on defenders. So we may have a chance because it looks like they're going to be winning by attacking, but they could have flying defenders, which could be the big problem. Oh no, they're on dwarfs. They're on a Dapala. They're on like Magda, like combo. Again, so they're going to get a giant dragon and just sweep our battlefield, right? Take it. I should probably start on um, on hidden stockpile though, right? Get that going. I think I should. Toolcraft exemplar, yeah, definitely dwarfs. I got a shock here, unfortunately. All right, hidden stockpile, go, and we'll make a servo. Next turn, Vran plus village rights should be a pretty solid play. See if they can assemble first strike on their tool craft guys. So if you control an, three or more artifacts, it gains first strike. If you control a artifact, it gets... Okay, so obviously, it looks like they're obviously going to flash in some kind of artifact here, like Glass Tooth of Chisgoria or something. So I think I'm just going to take this. They could also be flashing in the guy that gives artifacts flash, whatever his name is, the three-drop Thopter guy. Embercleave. Did not expect that. All right, so we're taking a huge hit here. But at the beginning of combat, they only get the buff of control and artifacts, so they, they missed out on that opportunity. All right, so let's go Vran. And then we will attack. Embercleave gives trample. So yet another match we're going to lose to not having main dagger right of oblivion. All right, so attack with the garrison cat. Village rights on the garrison cats. Drain and gain. Get another hidden stockpile, get a servo, and pass. Yeah, I know, they had to attack a cheap in Embercleave, I know. But they missed out on the opportunity to pump their guys, I'm saying. SRAM, chain of their- uh, yikes. Yikes! There goes Vran. That hurts because I actually needed Rand to be able to like have a chance in this game. Now the trampler is just going to destroy my face. They're actually offering this guy. All right. I'll block this guy. We're down to three. Dwarven Mine gives him a dwarf. That's pretty cool. All right. Um. Yeah, we're not going to survive a hit from that toolcraft. All right. Well, just like we've done every single game today, bring in Haywire, Might, and Raid of Oblivion. Dude, why is the meta so artifact and enchantment oriented? So very, very artifact oriented right now. 
We're in the artifact era of modern, even more so than the classic affinity days. All right. Um, Call me a false hope also seems great here. I think I can just lock them down with this. Like if they don't have like graveyard hate. All right. Village rights gets the boot. Crawling chorus bankrupt in blood. And then I think it has to be a couple more bankrupt in bloods. Just cut all our card draw in favor of like sideboard cards. Yep. It's weird to see so many artifact decks in a row. Yeah, but that's just modern. Um, Bankrupt and Blood with no creatures. Okay, I've never done this all day, but I'm I'm actually keeping this just because I have like the good setup cards and like the lands to play them. We're going to start on our Indatha Triome here. I got to draw Sackables. There's 16 in the deck right now, currently. 20 total one drop creatures if you count my sideboard cards. Toolcraft Exemplar. Another hidden stockpile. All right, well, let's fetch here. Grab a planes, play hidden stockpile, get a servo. Gives me a blocker for the toolcraft, unless they get down an artifact. I like their deck, though. It's really cool. I wonder if they got Magda in there. I mean, they should. Smuggler's Copter as well. Dude, that's awesome. I'm going to ask them if they got a list anywhere. Got a list anywhere you can show me after the game? All right, Kami, we got the lock here. We got the Kami lock. I'm asking them for a list because I want. I kind of want to play this. Maybe we'll play it next week. In a life of the biting grace. All right, so if they don't have Graveyard Hate, Kami just locks the game down. Sticky Fingers. That's cool. But they, they can't have Cavern of Souls in there because they need all the mountains for the Dwarven Mine. It feels like that, that deck would kind of suffer like on the first turn, though, because like they don't have very many one-drops. They just have those two guys. So they got lucky enough to find them against us both times, but that's not going to happen every time. I feel like that could be one glaring issue. Not having like the from the get go sort of play. Alrighty. Um, let's go to combat. Attack with the servo. Sack to scry. Bashing on top. Play Kami. Hidden stockpile. Go to the end step, make two servos, gain a life. 
So I lost my train of thought what I was actually going to do that I was thinking before the turn even came. Sack the call me and just reanimated at the end step to trigger the, the hidden stockpiles. I didn't have to do that sack there. I could have played double call me. It's all right, though. I don't think that's really going to change much in the game. I did lose a servo out of the deal, but it's probably fine. Okay, what's up, Nate Bowser? So if they don't find Graveyard Hate, we win. Magda, they can get a giant dragon and potentially kill stuff. Don't know what stuff that's going to be. Usually dragons only kill creatures, though, not artifacts and enchantments. That's cool how Magda can tap the crew and then get a treasure out of the deal. It's really cool. All right, time to sack the Kami. They still get to loot and they still get these Magda tokens. They can actually use this right now. They only got to sack five treasures. So they can just tap this to crew, even though it's already crewed. You can crew a thing that's already crewed, right? Pretty sure you can. So they can do that right now. They can tap right now, get a dragon or an artifact. Put it into play. Fashion of Remembrance is here. So yeah, let's just play that plus Kami and then just pass and reanimate Kami. Bastion, get a human. Play a Kami. We can attack with both of our servos here because if they block one, I'll just get two back in return because of revolt. They do block one, but then I'll get two. So they actually helped us with that. I also get a drain in game. People keep doing that. It's in their best interest to actually just take it. All right, they're gonna make some treasures. It actually helps that I have double um, double Kami here because they can end step get a dragon and like the dragon can ETB kill my whole board, including my Kami, and then they'll just kill me on the backswing. All right, Abiding Grace, reanimate Kami. Kami on the cell phone. All right. At some point, they'll realize what's going on here. It's up to them to determine whether they, whether or not they can fight this. Um, since Magda can like literally fetch anything, like I'm sure they gotta have something OP that can just deal with anything, right? Like they can grab any artifact. Like they can just grab like a Blightsteel Colossus, but then it can't deal damage to me. So they they'll have to get like. Uh, I don't know. Portal to Phyrexia wouldn't do it. Uh, city Leveler? City Leveler could do it. Because City Leveler can kill my Abiding Grace. But you can only get the trigger if you cast it. Do you cast it? 
Nope, you just put it onto the battlefield. But doesn't City Leveler also do its ability whenever it attacks? Obelisk of Erd, that's fine. I kind of forgot about Obelisk of Erd's existence. It makes me want to play Mono Red Goblins again. All right, let's just uh, sack the Kami here. Can't F6, though, because if they try to exile my other Kami, i got to be able to sack it in response. Okay, so they're attacking just to get the dwarf triggers. I mean, it's kind of ballsy of them to tap out like that when I can just, like, hit them on the backswing here. And like sack everything for lethal. If the best they got to fetch is almost convert, I'm fine. They don't have a single dragon. Not even like a storm breath or like a glory bringer. Alrighty, my turn. Nested shambler. Let's just go to combat and swing everything. Play Nested Shambler. Bankrupt in blood. Drain and gain, drain and gain. Get a squirrel, draw three cards. All right, play a uh, Doom Traveler. Go to the end step and reanimate Kami. Man, we're kind of we kind of like dodged a bullet that the opponent doesn't have any like huge OP game winning artifact or dragon that they can just fetch for. I, I think that. I, literally against any other modern deck, you would never get Magna to happen anyway. So it's like, why even put a, a wasted card in the deck for that? So might as well put Obelisk because you can actually hard cast Obelisk pretty dang easily. So might as well just have that as the search target for Magna because they didn't expect to ever use this. But since they're going up against a dirtily like infinite fog deck like mine, they actually finally had the chance to use it, but then didn't have anything for it. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, submit this right back. They gotta have Graveyard Hate now. All righty, um, that is gonna be a keep. Got the, the Haywire Might, so definitely gonna have to fetch uh, Indotha Triome here. I need more white mana though, a little bit of white light. They always have that guy at the start of the game. Jeez, they're getting lucky. They only have two one-drop dwarves and they keep getting them. All right, let's just Indotha and F6. Vran is nice. I think I'll start on Vran here. Oh, smug cop. I may just deal with that. 
Yeah, so they're tapped out because normally they'd be able to stop me from killing it with Haywire Might if they crew in response and turn it into a creature because this can only hit non-creatures. Since they're tapped out, this is my one opportunity and I think I have to take it. So Haywire Might. Kill it. Please give me a land. Don't have mana screw happen again. Opponent's already down to 14. Dapala? Nope, veteran motorist. I like veteran motorist. When it crews a creature, Gives plus one, plus one. That's, I like that guy. That guy's really good. Dang it. All right, play Vran. Bean Town, Beam Stick. Beam, beam Town, Beat Stick. All right, they equip that dude. The guys, they, you control an artifact or an enchantment, right? No, just an artifact. Do they have an artifact? That's an artifact. It's, all right, that's, that's tough. All right, we're going to have to take this. And they have a dwarf in mine. Dude, please. And this swamp doesn't do anything for me. I just got to go with the... Uh, Hunted witness and pass. That's all I got. Okay, I definitely got to play this deck again and build it differently. All right, block. This guy's got menace, right? So block here, block here, but then I die. So I have to block there and there. Get a soldier with a life flank, drain and gain. Please give me the third land. I die if I don't get the third land here. And they have another one. I needed them to just whiff and hit a land or something. Because they're in top deck mode. I just needed one brick. Give me a land. Oh, it's a shock land. No. I have to shock though, unfortunately. All right. Play a garrison cat and then we'll right of oblivion. Toolcraft has, this gives menace. Uh, I have to do it on a veteran motorist. I'm, I'm, I'm just so dead here either way. I'm so dead here. I, I can gain a life with the, the life link, but it's not going to be enough. I take three from the veteran motorist because they're going to put the menace on this guy. They got the, the first strike buff. Nope, they're putting on that guy. Um, yeah, I'm dead. GG. Got a list anywhere? I'm just seeing if the opponent replies with a list. Cause I, I wanna I wanna play that. That's pretty cool. Um don't think they do.
I, I like it though. If I play it, I guarantee you will never win with it. <laughs> but it's like, it's still cool, you know? I guess not. Yeah, I don't think they're checking the chat. I'll wait, I'll wait one more second and see if they reply. But I don't think they're looking at the chat. Yeah, I guess they're gone. Wait, can I go back in there? Nope, it's gone. All right, well, um, so many games lost today off the back of, um, I mean, two games lost to Mana Screw, and then the rest of them lost to not having the main deck right of Oblivion. So if I could build this deck again, like I said, I would cut the village rights and the crawling chorus, and I'd put another land in full right Oblivion. That I would do. I really like the Bankrupt and Blood. I think this was a nice bomb that really helped us just, just fuel the rest of our game. I could even see going 22 lands just because like you have more mana to pay into sacking with, with the hidden stockpile. It also would have been nice to have some kind of out that like a sack outlet that didn't cost anything. I also considered putting one of the, the Tarian, not Tarian's journal. What What is the, the two drop journal card? It's like a black artifact for two mana. You can tap to sack a creature and draw a card. Every time I thought about running that card, I always thought that I would rather just play this, you know, sack two, draw three. That other, that two drop artifact thing is like pay two mana and then I draw I sack one draw sack one draw that's sack three draw three it's like less valuable but you do have longevity you can do that over the course of several turns so it's like repeatable this is only one and done but you do get more value immediately right off the right out the gates so this is why I preferred bankrupt and blood I could see trying out a copy of that journal card though what's up power stables um, but the rest of the, of the whole setup with like the Bastion, the Abiding Grace, the Stockpile, the One Drops, and the Vran, I really like that whole idea. I think it it's it's very, very, um, I think it's going to be your safest bet with aristocrats in this current day and age in modern because they're all like this stuff is like hard to deal with. It's like, you know, they're enchantments, hard to deal with enchantments in the main deck and then like one drop creatures that die and make a creature are things that you're not going to want to waste your spot removal on. And I'm going to be able to just reanimate them with my sources that don't really get interacted with very easily. So I feel like if you're playing typical aristocrats these days, where it's all creatures, priests of the forgotten gods and stuff like that, and, ban and blood artists and Zulaport, it's going to be way too easy to deal with them. And, um, you know, if it's not a right of oblivion version, if you're running rally the ancestors, I think you or raise yeah, Rally the Ancestor is going to be too easy to, like, you actually die to Graveyard Hate, and you don't have the room for something like Right of Oblivion. Yeah, it is called Tarion's Journal, I was right. Um, so, yeah, I think that Aristocrats has evolved more into this route, personally, what I believe. So, yeah, I do, I do want to play Aristocrats. That's one of my favorite archetypes. I do want to play it again someday, pretty soon. Hopefully, in the new Outlaws of Thunder Junction, hopefully we get something new for aristocrats so i have an excuse to play it again so let's hope is whenever usually on the channel we always every, every single time a new set comes out i always like to revisit um modern stompy and aristocrats with new cards it's typically like a tradition so best believe we'll be back um but that's gonna do it for this one <laughs> for those watching on twitch stay tuned because we're gonna get to pioneer here in a moment and we got a really cool deck in Pioneer that should do a lot better. Um, for those watching on YouTube, though, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to drop a like and a comment because it helps out the algorithm. And if you are new here, please consider subscribing. We do Modern every Monday, and Fr Modern every Monday, Pioneer every Friday. So if you like that kind of thing, I hope you stick around for more. If you want to catch the gameplay live on Twitch, we do our streams every single Saturday afternoon. Twitch link down below if you want to catch it. I'll be there next Saturday. Hope to see you there. And... With that, I'll catch you in the next video. See you later.